When working on choosing a college or a building a college list, there's one key word that I want to spend a little time breaking down for you, and that is fit. But what does that actually mean? In this video, we're gonna break it down with an easy to remember acronym, F-I-T. And whether you're a student working on developing a list of colleges that you might want to submit applications to, a parent or guardian or family that's supporting a student working on that, this idea of fit is actually super crucial to not only help you build a solid list of college applications, but also find the programs and the information that will be best suited for you, the individual student, as you're navigating the world of college. So what does it actually mean? The F in fit stands for fulfillment. These relate to the personal needs and wants and, and working on finding an environment where you will thrive as a person, as a member of a community, and any of those other elements that you feel like are important to who you are. The I is interests and academics. So matching those academic goals, what are your learning styles, the opportunities and the connections that you might need to help thrive as a learner. And then the T is tuition and financial aid. Starting to understand the potential costs, return on your investment of time and energy and money, and understanding a little bit more about how to stack the deck in your favor in this world. Looking at the idea of this first element of fit, the F or fulfillment, this really is the foundational component of this idea. And many times in more typical or traditional views of college admissions actually happens at the end versus the beginning. And this idea of fit actually flips this process over. We wanna dive into how well individual colleges will meet you not how well you meet individual college needs. This is really tough for students, primarily because there are little true concrete data points that you can look up, find online, determine based on your own set of criteria. And it also really asks students to think introspectively about who they are and who they wanna become. It's really challenging, but it's really, really important because we could find a great academic fit, we could find a great financial fit, but if we don't find this idea of fulfillment in the place that we are gonna spend the next, at least you know, three or four years to five to seven years, you might find yourself struggling and not able to thrive in that environment. So this idea of fulfillment is super important. Many times it's related to environmental factors and then also feelings. Okay, so some of these environmental factors could be elements like size and location. So broadly considering geographic needs and wants. You can also broadly consider the pros and cons regarding size, and size is relative. In the world of college, size is contextual, right? So at North Tahoe High School, we have you know about 500 students that's a relatively smaller sized high school. A large sized high school might be 2,500 or 3,000 students. But that large sized high school is actually a small college. Most metrics kind of start a small college around 2,500 students and go to about five to 6,000 students in the undergraduate level. A medium college it goes to about 15,000 to 20,000 students and about a large college would be 20,000 plus. Some of the large sized colleges are actually the size of many small to medium sized cities. So it's really contextual to understand what that actually means when you say I want to go to a big college or a small college, because comparing it to your current school may not necessarily provide the best kind of comparable uh, tool to, to really look at. Next is the campus climate. Is it a commuter campus or a sprawling open campus that takes you 20 minutes to walk from one end to the other? Is there a vibrant student life or is it focused and a little more quiet, maybe a little more intellectual? Those things are important for some students and many students really care about what they're gonna be doing on campus outside of just the classroom time. If all we look at are one element of fit and kind of look at them in isolation, it's really tough to get the bigger picture. 
that's why all three together really combine to make this magical equation. Another example would be cultural, political climate on campus. This, in this modern day and age, has become more important as campus factors have shifted. Different areas of the country have different viewpoints and beliefs, and that might be important for some students to consider. Also extracurriculars, so that might be clubs on campus if you want to be an athlete or participate in intramural sports. And then access to maybe activities outside of just the college campus area. What does the surrounding community look like? Is it in the middle of a city? Is it in a rural but small college town that kind of revolves around that college existing there? Is it in the suburbs or somewhere that maybe doesn't have access to easy transportation options that might be important for you if you're far away from, say, your home base? Those are all some examples of fit. The next item in there is the I, or interests in academics. This oftentimes actually gets the second fiddle in this acronym because it's more fun to think about your environment, where you'd like to be. I wanna to move to the beach, or I wanna to move to the city. Those are really, really exciting aspects and also really tangible aspects for students to imagine. The idea of really exploring and diving into interests and then also understanding the impact on academics at different schools is a tough one to conceptualize for students in the brain. A couple ways to look at this would be considering like college majors and career paths and then diving into like what academic needs do students have? What kind of a learner are you? Okay, Is the step that you're gonna take into this college gonna help you reach your ultimate goal down the road? And sometimes this actually comes second, but it's well worth spending the time, energy, and effort to think about and talk through this particular area. Interests really kind of dive into uh, the area of focus of study for many students. And so one of the areas that I emphasize with students when I'm working with them is this idea about branching out beyond the basics. And so most people, in the working world are not just psychologists, are not just engineers, are not just doctors, are not just teachers even. Most folks, maybe that's what they intend to start their progression through, but many people actually specialize and dive deeper and take a very specific or focused major while in college or in graduate school, depending on the path. And so there are so many different career paths and college majors out there, and many of them actually are hard to say or pronounce, or you read them and you don't actually understand what that means. And so they often get skipped over, even though they might be the perfect fit for students. So having students, and students, if you're watching this, setting an end goal to ensure that your college list will actually help you reach that goal is really important. But that means you have to identify where you're trying to go. And that's tough because it takes thought, it takes research, and it takes a little bit of kind of guessing and putting yourself out there a little bit on the limb saying like, this is what my first initial target's going to be. And so sometimes it is better to be broad, but sometimes it's better to be specific because if you're going into a specific field, that broad approach might take longer, it might not lead to that next step potentially. So it's really, really crucial to consider all of the options available to you. Here's just an example of UCLA's majors and minors. They have over 140, I believe. And so this just gives an example. If I ask students to name some of these majors, I bet they probably could name 20. And there's over 140 different majors just at UCLA. And then if you go right down the road and maybe go over to UC Riverside, they might have another set of majors and some might have direct correlation, meaning French is French is French, but their engineering program might call itself something completely different, but cover very similar topics. Similar majors at different schools may say the same thing, but actually cover fairly different information. So understanding the intricacies and nuances of the major and what that actually means really requires some thinking on behalf of students. So I wanna encourage students to take the time 
to really dive in and ask questions and understand what is bioinformatics? What does Armenian studies mean? What does Hebrew and Jewish studies actually dive into? And is that something maybe I want to investigate for myself? Because it's super, super crucial that we start looking into it. Here's a couple interesting majors that you might not typically see at most colleges, but are out there and might be right up your alley. So biomimicry, Arizona State offers this master's degree and it's a study of basically building in natural elements. So nature, nature design elements into different types of design, whether that's furniture or housing or architecture or clothing. There's also one called leisure studies at Southern Illinois University that offers basically the idea of investigating how leisure and recreation impacts people's lives positively or negatively. And foresight is a unique kind of major that students can take at the University of Houston. And that basically focuses on trying to, it's like kind of like the future focused, right? So it helps trying to figure out what is gonna be a big need in the future. How do they plan ahead, thinking three steps down the road. And if I asked a high school student, what do you, you know, would this be interesting to you? If, if someone said foresight as a major, many times people would say, I don't even know what that is. I'm just gonna pretend it doesn't exist and move on from there. Same thing with biomimicry. Even though students might be able to express the other way around of like, oh, I really like blending nature and design together in my artwork. And that might be something I'm really interested in pursuing in college. The name sounds scary, but the meaning behind it might be right up your alley. And then academics. Considering how students learn best is really, really crucial. When you're sitting in a classroom of whether it's 15 or 150 in a lecture hall, understanding how you as a student gather and retain information. What kind of things do you engage in? What kind of learner are you? Are you an auditory learner, a kinesthetic learner, a visual learner? Do you work well in groups or would you prefer to learn more independently? Do you want to take all in-person classes? Would you want to add a couple online classes? Do you function better in the evening or at night? Are there different types of requirements that matter to you? Do you want very, very rigid courses of study, meaning this, this is the prescribed course of study, or would you like to dabble and explore more? All of those things are really crucial elements of figuring out how you learn and what your academic experience in class is going to be because that actually makes or breaks many of your experiences, whether it's hands-on. If you're a hands-on learner and you go somewhere that's very theoretical, your experience might suffer as well as your learning. And lastly, the tuition and financial aid. This one is a tough one because I generally advise students and families in the early part of this determining fit process to kind of loosely ignore this financial aid piece because Sometimes people will rule out opportunities based simply on kind of the sticker price. However, I think it is important to consider within FIT because what you don't want to do is limit your options to non-diverse paths, meaning you can, you can consider different avenues to reach your programmatic, programmatic goals and degree goals, and it might save or cost more money depending on which path you choose. So a couple of tips about finding the right fit in this tuition and financial aid area of fit is number one is families should start talking about money and this needs to happen before students get to their senior year. And it doesn't mean that you have to break down the entire budget or savings plans or things like that, but understanding a little bit about how much or how little your family can afford to contribute outside of a financial aid package to a student's education. The government will expect families to contribute something in most cases, and that might be $1,000 a year, it might be full cost. It all very much depends on your family financial situation. However, having that conversation so your student knows walking into this process, my family can realistically afford to contribute $3,500 a year over four years. And that's really what I can expect because when that financial aid package comes down the road, that's what we have to work with and making some priority based decisions about whether or not I take on more loans or not, choose a different path could be heavily weighted based on how much support a student may or may not have in the financial realm. The other thing is understanding students' risks. 
will you be willing to pay more to attend a certain school potentially? Is it worth it in the wrong, long run? It, is the return on your investment valuable in your eyes? So understanding student and family risk in relation to going to college. And then also stacking the deck. And what I mean by that is considering different types or families of college. So considering applying to in-state public institutions. Most in-state public institutions, you're gonna get a relatively similar type of aid package from most of those schools. Think about an out-of-state uh, university or two. There are many states where their out-of-state tuition rate is actually on par or even less than our in-state tuition rates at many of our CSU and UC campuses. So consider out-of-state public institutions. And then private universities typically don't care what state you live in, they're gonna have a cost, but don't ignore those options either because they also have more slush money to throw around based on your needs, but also your merits. And that's an important consideration because you wanna consider this as part of that diverse hand that you're basically trying to build to determine where your financial priorities lie you won't actually find out your financial aid award until after you get admitted. So it's important to understand just by applying, typically you're not agreeing to go there. You're not signing up. So it's worth it in the beginning, but it is wise to actually understand a little bit about what your fit is gonna be related to finances before you start diving into this list. So you build the diverse list. You understand what maybe the constraints could be down the road. The goal of working on fit is actually to grow. Okay, so doing this over time, creating the opportunities. And many times when students walk in in ninth grade, this is kind of what their vision looks like of their target. It's far away, it's fuzzy, it doesn't have a clear definition. And I want over the course of ninth grade to 12th and even beyond that, is to develop into a vision that looks more like this. It may not be fully clear, it may not be crystal, it may not be right in your face, but it will be clearer than it was, and you will have a more defined idea of what college fit in your life looks like. Because fit is a continuum. There really is no right or wrong answer, and every student will be unique, okay? You will have to make decisions based on those priorities, and you'll have pros and cons to consider, and some of those will be hard to make. It's sometimes a hard decision. It's also a process and it takes time. It's not best done all at once. So if you walk into your senior year trying to solve this problem, it's going to be stressful. Start early, spend the time, really think about it and utilize some of the resources around you because there really is no easy button. There's no button that's going to say, click this and this will give you all the answers. It's going to spit out your college list for you and make all these really choices super simple. So ultimately it's time to get started understanding these ideas of fit, thinking hard, and understanding that there are people here to help you. Your school counselor is here to help you. We have many, many adults who have gone through the process and also help students go through the process outside of even, even just the counseling office. Talk to a teacher, talk to Ms. Barker, talk to Mr. Fleesock or Ms. Mitchell. All these folks are willing and able to help you navigate this idea of fit. And a lot of times what that means is we're gonna ask a lot of questions. One of my most common question is why and so what? because that really puts the thought process in of justifying some of these priorities and decisions on your plate. Please do come back and visit. We have annual ILP meetings with families. That's a great booster shot. It's a longer conversation, but that does not have to be a one-time, once-a-year thing. Have some conversations. Come back and set up a follow-up appointment. It could be five minutes. It could be 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Let's dive in and work through this together and spread this work out, and we can help you make great decisions based on what you're going to be doing next year.